Let's talk about isomorphisms. The two graphs that I've drawn here may look a little different, but if you look closely, you'll notice that they have exactly the same structure. An isomorphism is a formal description that they are essentially the same graph. We'll begin by giving the definition of when two graphs are isomorphic. In the definition, we will use a term called bijection. If you don't know what bijection is, don't worry, we're going to discuss it afterwards with our example. Two simple graphs, G and H, are said to be isomorphic if there is a bijection, let's call it theta, which is a map that maps us from the vertex set of the first graph G to the vertex set of the second graph H which preserves adjacency and non-adjacency. This means that u and v are adjacent in the graph G if and only if theta of u and theta of v are adjacent in the graph H. A nice piece of notation we use is G equals with a squiggle mark on top to H to mean that G and H are isomorphic. Now before I define what a bijection is, let's look at our example and give an actual mapping which will be an isomorphism. Since it will be an isomorphism, it will be a bijection, and from that example, we'll then discuss the details of what a bijection really is. So let's call the red graph G and the blue graph H. And now I want to define an isomorphism, theta, and I'm going to use this notation, where in this notation, I'm going to write the vertices of one graph G along the top, and below that, we write down the vertices in the graph H that they're mapped to. So this means that vertex V1 is mapped to vertex 1 in H, and vertex V2 is mapped to vertex 3 in H. So you can think of this map theta as really telling you that this vertex V1 should be sent over here to this vertex 1 in this other graph H. And if we pick another example like V3, V3 needs to be sent to vertex 4. So. That gets sent over there. In a moment we're going to take a look at why this mapping is indeed a bijection and we'll look at what a bijection really is, but for right now let's just look at whether or not it actually preserves the adjacency. So let's think about what that means. It means that if you have any pair of vertices in the original graph G which are adjacent, then after the mapping they should still be adjacent. Now the drawing that I just did, I showed where V1 and V3 map, they mapped to non-adjacent places and they were non-adjacent in the original. So that's all good, but what we have to check is now every edge in G needs to map to an edge in H. So let's see if that works. Just to demonstrate this, I'm going to choose a particular edge to show you. Consider the edge V1, V2 in the graph G. So we can see in the graph G that V1 is indeed adjacent to V2. So now what we do is we take a look at how theta maps V1 theta of v1 and then theta of v2. So what we get is 1 and 3 because theta maps v1 to 1 and v2 to 3. And indeed 1, 3 is an edge in the graph H. Another way of saying is this is that vertex 1 and vertex 3 are adjacent in the graph H. So that's good. We checked that adjacency was preserved for this particular edge. Now you would have to go through and check every single edge and make sure that adjacency is preserved, but indeed it works out. You can just run the same process on all of the edges and you'll see, yes, adjacency is always preserved here. So now let's take a look at this map theta and figure out why it is a bijection. So I'm going to scroll down and we're going to take a look at a representation of the mapping, which is not a graph. I'm just going to draw a pictorial representation of this map theta. So let me write down on this side v1 through v5, and on this side I'll write down 1 through 5. So on the left I have the vertices of the graph G, and on the right I have the vertices of the graph H. Now what I want to do is take a look at what theta does. It sends the vertices from the graph G to the graph H, and here's how it does it. It takes v1 and it sends it over to vertex 1 in the graph H. Now this arrow is not an edge of a graph, this is just a pictorial representation of my map theta. V2 gets mapped to 3, V3 gets mapped to 4, and V4 gets mapped to 2. Finally, V5 gets mapped to 5. So this map theta that I've drawn in green is really a bijection from this red set to this blue set. So now we're ready for the actual definition of the word bijection.
A bijection is a map from a set A to a set B that is both one-to-one, -one, which is also called injective, and onto, which is also called surjective. Okay, you must be thinking, I didn't know what a bijection was, and now you're telling me that a bijection is something that is an injection and a surjection, so it's injective and surjective, but I don't know what those terms are, and it's more and more confusing. Well, we'll take it one step at a time. What I'm going to do is draw three little examples to demonstrate what it means for something to be one-to-one, -one, in other words, injective, and also what it means for something to be onto, in other words, surjective. I've taken these images from Wikipedia and they will describe exactly what we need. So let's scroll down a little bit. Here on the left, I have an example of a mapping from a set X to a set Y, and it happens to be one-to-one, -one, but not onto. The example on the right is onto, but not one-to-one. -one. So let's see what these mean. The idea of something being one-to-one -one means that if you have two distinct elements on the set X, they cannot map to the same thing in the set Y. And right here we have two distinct elements, this three and this four, both getting mapped to C. And that is exactly why it is not one-to-one. -one. So now let's figure out why it's onto. This example is onto because onto means that every element in the set Y gets covered by the mapping. So here in the set Y, these elements D, B, and C were all covered. Whereas if you look at the left-hand example, you'll see that it's not onto because of this element right here, C. C is not hit and therefore it is not onto. Now let's take a look at the middle example. We'll notice that every element on the left goes to a unique element on the right. What that means is that there are no pair of elements on the left that go to the same place on the right. And that tells us that it is indeed one-to-one. -one. So we have something that is one-to-one -one here. We can also look at the set Y and see that every element in this side is indeed covered by the mapping. So that tells us that it's onto. So we've satisfied both the conditions of being one-to-one -one and onto. And that means that this one here in the middle is a bijection. The one on the left, which is one-to-one -one but not onto, is known as an injective function. And the one on the right, which is onto but not one-to-one, -one, is known as a surjective function. If you satisfy both being surjective and being injective, then you get a bijection. So now we can see that our picture here that represents the isomorphism we gave is indeed a bijection. We've also seen that this isomorphism satisfies the preserving adjacency, and that's how we knew that the two graphs we started off with were actually the same graph. So there you have it. Let's go back up and we'll just take again a look at the definition of when two graphs are isomorphic. So we know that they're isomorphic if there exists a bijection that preserves adjacency. And here was our example showing that these two graphs were indeed isomorphic. I'll see you next time.